request to our location and sizing and distribution networks using particle swarm optimization algorithm. It will be presented by Gaston Enrique Medoza. That's it. Uh, he received his bachelor in science degree in electrical engineering from EPSO University, Guayaquil, Ecuador, in 2015. He worked installing and testing medium and high voltage electrical substations, and currently he is pursuing his master's in science degree at Federal University of Bahia, Salvador, Brazil. His main interests include optimization techniques for planning and operation in electrical power systems. Okay, you have 10 minutes for presentation and then we have some minutes for questions, okay? Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Gaston Mendoza. My partner is uh, Viviana Vacas. I'm the professor in the University of Correa. Optimal capacity allocation and sizing in distribution networks using particles one optimization algorithm. This paper presents a procedure using a particle swarm optimization. This paper presents a procedure using a particle swarm optimization based algorithm to, optima, to solve optimal capacitors uh, allocation and sizing in distribution and radial distribution networks. The aim of capacitors in distribution networks is, is to reduce uh, power losses, uh, voltage profile improvement, uh, reactive power compensations and reliability enhancement. Uh, the optimal capacitors is a allocation is a combinatorial problem where the search space grows exponentially with the size of the network. Mathematically, it's a nonlinear problem whose, uh, whose solution is not convex and may present different optimal local solutions. In this paper, to estimate the, the total power losses is used a backward-forward sweep power flow algorithm. Particles one optimization is a methodistic developed by Kennedy and Eberhardt. It's a bio-inspired methodistic that used a concept of social interaction to problem solving. Uses a basic logics and simple mathematical uh, formulas that make it easy to implement. This metaheuristic technique optimizes the problem by iteratively trying to, to perform, to improve a candidate solution. With regard to a given uh, objective function, it solves a problem by having a population of, of candidate solutions in this case called part particles, and moving these particles around the search space according to uh, a simple mathematical formulas uh, over the positions, uh, the particle positions and velocities. The particles movement is, is influenced by its its personal best known position and also is influenced by a global best known position found by any of the other particles of the swarm. This is expected to move the swarm toward the best solutions. Here we have uh, the, um, the expressions for the velocity and, and position of the particles where uh, V is the velocity of the particles, X is the position of particles, uh, K is the, num the iteration number. See, we have uh, the P best, K, so K is the personal best position, G best is the 
global best position. And we have the three important factors. Uh, w is the inertial factor, C1 is the cognitive factor, and C2 is the social factor. That these three factors uh, modify the behavior of the algorithm. So the concept of the modification of the search point in piece ASO for for uh, the new uh, velocity is is, is uh, influenced by the previous velocity, the personal experience, the second term, and the global experience. and the global experience. So the, the particle move another point. In this paper, we use a linearly decreasing inertia factor, a linearly decreasing cognitive factor, a linearly increasing social factor. So the, the search concept, in this way, the, at the beginning, the particles will uh, jump, we have uh, large jumps, see, uh, uh, for, uh, for exploring, for trying to explore all the search space, yeah, um, and as iterations uh, increase, the jumps are getting shorter to, to refine and, and find the best solution. Uh, problem formulation, uh, le, the objective function is uh, has three terms. The first term is the total power loss uh, cost. The second is the operating cost. And the third is the, is the fixed cost involved. The, as, con as constrictions uh, have the, the voltage of the buses, the limits, the limits of the voltage buses, and the and it's considered that the that the total reactive compensation not cannot exceed the total load reactive load of the of the system um, to find the best combination of size or the sites and, and sizes we uh, you use two pso algorithms the global to determine the optimal allocation of the capacitors, the internal to size those capacitors uh, optimally using a power flow to calculate the losses. Uh, like an example, we have a uh, optimal uh, allocation of three capacitors in a 34 buses uh, network. Uh, each particle represents a combination of possible sites. See, uh, yeah, in, in that, in that case, we have six particles of the global PCO. For each particle of global PCO, which uh, it will uh, execute an internal PCO for optimal sizing. And uh, each particle of the internal PCO will execute a power flow to calculate the objective function and compare that results. So uh, then, uh, after several iterations, uh, it will update the personal best and G-best and convert to the solution. Uh, for example, one solution, one best sizes for one combination of, of sites as equally uh, in the global PCO, PCSO. After several iterations, we will convert to the solution. But uh, test and results, uh, the algorithm was test on two, two networks, 34, 34 and 85 bus radial distribution networks. Uh, those are the PSO parameters. Uh, so were selected after several tests for improve the, the algorithm. Those are the, the and if you are 
networks. Um, well, the, the first case is to compare, was compare the, the PSO algorithms with another uh, metabolistic technique. In this case, the, the WOA, the WOA, uh, the WOA optimization algorithm uh, that is based on the behavior of the whales when they are searching for food. And in this case, uh, we, we use uh, object and function of this paper. Uh, the results are, are uh, in different, we found a, a solution with different bases and sizes, but, but the, the result is better, see, yeah. Uh, and another case we use, uh, we consider uh, the fixed cost. We, alloc we optimally located uh, three, one, two, and three capacitors once at a time. See, and, uh, and, uh, and the minimum objective function was reached with, in this case, with three capacitors. Uh, this is the, the voltage of uh, voltage profile, the graph of voltage profile before and after the compensation. And in, an, in another case, uh, in the 85, 85 bus rail distribution network, the, the minimum objective function was reached with four capacitors. Equally, the, it's the graph of voltage. And, uh, this paper presents an alternative procedure based on based on PSO, PSO for optimal allocation and sizing of capacitors to reduce total power uh, losses and involucrate cost in radial distribution networks. Uh, the, the performance was compared with well algorithm and that proved the effectiveness of the proposed algorithm, obtaining a quite good results. And also uh, was proved the, the advantages of the optimal capacitor allocation. Thank you. Okay, we have five minutes for questions. Any question? Okay, I was. I was supposing that you. Thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, actually, I, it's mo it's only a curiosity mm -hmm. because uh, this this problem of optimal capacitor bank allocation distribution system, it's a well known problem in this area, and uh, we know that there are several methods method in order to solve this kind of problem. For example, genetic algorithms, microgenetic algorithms, uh, simulating annealing, and so on and so forth. So, in your opinion, what's the advantage you can highlight on using PSO rather than these other uh, metaheuristics algorithms? Um, the simplicity, it's uh, easy to Im you implement. The another algorithm needs um, two more uh, uh, considerations. Yeah. Uh, have you ever, another question, have you ever considered the, the DG connected in your, uh, in your distribution system? Uh, I ask that because uh, when I see your cost function, uh, I see you take into account the, the voltage limits, actually, in your constraint. So, uh, as Professor Valmy uh, tell us yesterday, uh, we've, uh, in, in case in which we have a lot of DGs in the distribution system, uh, usually we have over voltage or under voltage uh, yeah. profile during uh, in the in your distribution system, so have you taken account in your analysis yeah. the DG? Uh, I am a, I am already studying those cases with the distributed generation. See, uh, do, this algorithm uh, works fine with uh, general talking um, power compensation. See? Yeah. 
Okay, thank you. Just the first comment. You are talking about implementing something. A suggestion. There are so many libraries of pre-existing um, optimization methods of all kinds that a moment ago have been listed and there is more. I suggest uh, forget uh, implementation because uh, unless you are an ultimate hacker with in-depth knowledge of intricacies of each method, which most likely you are not because you are just working on your master's degree, your implementation itself may be flawed. I am not saying that it is, but there is a high probability that without in-depth knowledge that you are trying to get from your work, uh, your implementation will not be as good as those who have spent enormous amounts of manpower to create competitive libraries. And this being the case, I suggest you focus on the physics, on the networking aspects, on the problem itself, while leaving the implementation to those who did it already and just use the existing software. Stand on the shoulder of giants instead of trying to be a giant yourself. You will get higher. Thank you, Gaston. Let's go to the next presentation. The paper title is Speed and Reactive Power Regulation of Double Fed Induction uh, Generator Using Model Predictive Control. It will be presented by Bruno Pereira, who got the title of, I'm sorry, that's right? Bruno? Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, Bruno Pereira, who got the title of Bachelor in Electrical Engineering from University, uh, Federal University of Bahia uh, in 2014. He's currently studying for a master's degree in Electrical Engineer at the same university. His main research interests are control systems applied to electrical drives and robotics. Okay, you have 10 minutes. Good luck. Uh, as Max said, said in the last presentations, uh, first I'm going to present some, some overview of the double fed induction generator. Uh, he's a synchronous machine operating in generator mo mode. Uh, uh, this, this topology, sorry. This topology has some advantages, such as lower, lower converter costs and power loss, lower power losses when it's compared to another generating topologies with uh, variable, variable speeds of, of turbine. Uh, this, this advantage happens because it uses uh, the, the DFAG uses a back-to-back -back converter connected to both both stator and rotor terminals. Uh, the back-to-back -back is, uh, uh, the back-to-back -back, uh, is only two converters connected to a common DC bus. Uh, the, fir the first one is the grid side converter, uh, which is responsible to keep the DC voltage stable. And the rotor side converter is responsible to control the rotor currents and also achieve a power or electromagnet electromagnetic torque regulation uh, depending on, on your objective. In this paper, I will only focus on the rotor side converter and present a, a, a strategy to, to control the, the rotor currents. The, 
the GFIG is can be represented in the synchronous have synchronous oriented frame or stato flux oriented frame and it's presented as a coupled memo, uh, multi input multi output system and, and we can be, see here that we have a, a coupling some coupling terms of the DQ uh, currents which is function which is function of the slip speed of the generator uh, by the equation sets uh, we can achieve stator reactive power electromagnetic torque and also uh, rotor speed using an uh, uh, extra uh, control loop in this paper I, I just used a PI regulator to, to achieve the the rotor speed and and get the reference of electromagnetic torque. Uh, however, uh, in some some strategies may not uh, uh, overcome well these these coupling terms. So, sorry, I'm considering now uh, virtual rotor voltage, which is function of the measured uh, rotor speed and rotor current as well. And the new model in, in function of the this virtual rotor voltage now uh, can be seen as a single uh, two decoupled uh, systems, uh, single input, single output systems. Uh, this is the, the system uh, in state in state space model after the the cancellation of the coupling terms. Now going to the to the model predictive control strategy. If I use this this kind of decoupler, uh, this feed forward cou uh, coupling, I may have. I, maybe I, I, I will have some errors caused by, by uh, measurements of current or rotor speed. Uh, so I, I, I will use a new model. Uh, I will use a new, a new model. It's an incremental model where C is the difference of the actual states and the the output as well, and it will be controlled by the increment of input, the increment of uh, rotor voltage uh, that you can see over here. The, the matrix uh, A, B, and C, uh, aug the augmented matrix can be uh, can be calculated by these equations, and as I said before, the, the, this model representation deals naturally with constant errors that may be caused by, by the reliability, low reliability of the, of the cancellation. To, to achieve the, the control all, I, I will need to calculate the predicted outputs uh, that you can see over here, and where this NY is the ho uh, prediction horizon, and NU is the control horizon. Uh, this, the matrix F and H can be calculated, uh, easily calculated by, by those equations. And the cost function of the controller is this expression which is which takes account of the control effort uh, of the controller and the the it weights also the difference between the the predicted outputs and the future reference as well this q, q and r are uh, parameterization that I, I i must take a a 
parameterizations of, of the system. Minimizing this cost, cost fu function, I, without restrictions by now, I have, I have this control law. And the future references uh, can be calculated by, by these two expressions that I, I said before. Uh, these are some simulation results. Uh, here we can uh, achieve, can, can see the reactive power response and the rotor speed response, which are calculated by, sorry, uh, which are, are the reference uh, that, that I can choose. And those, those, Outputs of of reactive power and rotor speed drives the reference of the DQ rotor currents, uh, doing the the transformation of the DQ to alpha beta and the three phase current response. I can I can see the the three phase current response of the rotor of the generator. As conclusion, uh, this paper presents a, a MPC strategy for the, the generator using a feed-forward decoupler. Uh, this incremental model solves, uh, the incremental uh, MPC model solves some possible errors in the decoupling phase that I may have. And also the main, the main, uh, the main gain of this paper is the strategy presents high compu computational advantage when compared to similar strategies that does not use any decoupling technique. That's it. Thank you, Bruno, for a nice presentation. We have time for questions. No questions? Okay, I have some questions. <laughs> Bruno, uh, uh, when I was taking a look in your paper, I, uh, I got that the, the main advantage of your method is the reduction of the computational burden, right? Yeah. But regarding the control performance, uh, do you think that the advantage that you show here makes your method uh, interesting for the industry? Uh, it presents a better, uh, a better performance than the, the uh, classic con control techniques as shown in other papers that uses model predictive control. But uh, the, the, the principal uh, objective of this, this paper is only to show a uh, better way to deal with this pro the model predictive control problem uh, computa in computa computationally you know uh, I, I i i just presented a a better way to to deal with it not in i can have uh, bigger horizons in in this strategy and maybe uh, have a better performance than other, other ones. Thank you. Questions? Thank you, Bruno, for your excellent presentation. Thank Actually, you. it's a very interesting work you have done. And uh, I have two questions. The first one, it's just in a, actually in a curiosity. Uh, do you have an uh, it, uh, uh, it, it get faster the convergence and also the results was uh, good and so that that was the, the the idea I had when I was thinking about hypermutation because because it it is it makes easier the process to solve the problem. Okay, questions. Did you compare the, the GA with hypermutation with other techniques rather than the GA algorithm? Uh, like the PSO that has already been presented today? 
No, not uh, the my, the focus of this work was to compare to improve indeed the genetic algorithm and to make it better. So that like, there was ideas that we were talking about, like adaptive genetic algorithm, and then this idea about hypermutation. But uh, this uh, algorithm, I think, can contribute to other researchers. And so anyone who is interested on, in that, I just I am here to. I just want to add one theme before. Uh, Get into my seat. Uh, and so uh, these uh, techniques, which are optimization technique, techniques, uh, even though they are in the libraries and people can use it, the big problem is how we can adapt these techniques to this problem, for example. So this is the, it's not that easy. It's, it, it takes time, of course, but this is the problem. And so uh, even though the, a friend of mine here uh, uh, presented a, a work on uh, particle optimization, so I can say this also can help, but it, it depends on how it can get adapted to any problem. So that's all. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Okay, next paper uh, will be presented by Zuma Suarez, uh, was born in Governador Valadares, Brazil. He received the bachelor degree in electrical engineering from the Federal University of Juiz de Fora, the master in science degree in system engineering and computation, and uh, doctor in science degree, electrical engineering, both from University Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. He is a IEEE member of the Power Engineering Society from 2006 and 7, he worked as a research engineer in the Brazilian Power System Research Center, CEPEL. From 2007 to 10, he worked as senior engineer in the Brazilian ISO, ONS in Brazil, the TS, Brazilian TSO, and he has been an assistant professor at the Institute of Electric Systems and Energy, Unifei Brazil. His main areas of interest are power system stability and optimization, security region analysis, and system control. He will present the paper entitled Comparative Methodologies for Analysis of Angular Stability to Small Signals. Okay, you have 10 minutes. Thank you for being here. Good luck. Thank you, Professor. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. And we're going to wait a minute because we don't have a slide. Uh, I'm sorry. Yet. Okay. Okay, we're ready. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Zuma Soares Machado, and uh, uh, I will present you uh, uh, <coughs> steps of a master dissertation of my student, Gabriel uh, de Vasconcelos Eng, and uh, the, the title is Comparative Methodology for Analysis and Angular Stability uh, to Small Signal. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the topics of the presentation is an introduction, and uh, we're going to talking about uh, the motivation about the research, this research, and this, then another section about the methodologies. Uh, the only two methodologies we will be presented here because we have uh, another other comparative methods using the, this research. Uh, then another section we will be present results and the conclusions. Well, uh, in, par in, the power, uh, in the power system, uh, we have uh, the integrate new technologies uh, such as winding uh, generations and uncertainties involving generators and uh, the increase in accessibility in the power system. We have to think about it and how can improve the characteristics of the, the system we, and the new technologies integrated and working on them. 
So uh, the deal of this research, uh, we're looking for uh, uh, consider the uh, phaser measurement unit in the future, but uh, in the uh, actual uh, research, we will present only the two methods with the single uh, in initial uh, research. Uh, the 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 goal will be be state space realization through apply, applied signal uh, dynamic systems. The the comparative methodology consists only the the two methods. The first one is the prony methods that will be considered only the conventional two. In power systems analysis, a uh, method traditional, but uh, we here we only use a single method without the improvements, and uh, we detected some difficulties to analyze the methods when compared with the others. And uh, the first one is the method using only one signal at the time. And the system orders uh, has been to be estimated, and the method will present the difficult to estimate the order of the system. <clears throat> the other method will be presented the dynamic modes decomposition, and uh, the based in the model dynamics of the system, and the the results will present a, a, a good uh, uh, characteristics when uh, allow the analysis will be uh, considering multiple si signals and can capture the polynomial order. Uh, about the, the prony methods, uh, when we were talking with uh, the state space modeling, and we have the first equation and the matrix A represents the dynamic of the system. But uh, generally, without uh, unknown uh, uh, calculation or representation of the matrix, but to com realize the comparative analysis here will be calculated using a traditional software of the electric power system, but uh, the, the system will be considered without uh, excitation and uh, input. To solve the prony methods, we need to solve the single, the last equation show over there, and the dynamic equation uh, treated like a, okay, treat like a discrete uh, domain can be realized through the linear prediction model. We have uh, to solve the linear uh, matrix system, and the linear system will result the polynomial coefficients without containing dynamic modes of the systems. And the polynomial is present in the last equation. About the dynamic model, the composition, we have two matrices, and we can uh, consider the M signals and having N, N plus one samples. Okay. The relation between the uh, matrix uh, Y1 and Y0, we have the constant linear mapping matrix A. And uh, uh, in order to optimize the eigenvalues, the composition we have to, to present, we can uh, improve the robustness of the methods uh, about the approximation of the matrix like the last equation. About the results, now, the method we will apply is, uh, in the traditional New England power system, and we have to validate the eigenvalues of the, the, the of this system using the packaging software from CEPEL. Uh, 65 eigenvalues were ca calculated of the system operation point. The idea is uh, calculate of the, the eigenvalues and use the prony and DMD methods to compare. Uh, take a look in uh, 
table, we can see that eigenvalues estimated by Prony is at 1,018 eigenvalues, which 22 eigenvalues are closer to packaging software. And DMD, 35 eigenvalues was estimated, and 30 was closer to packaging. Uh, in this picture, we can see the, the comparative eigenvalues. Né? X represent the packaging calculation, square the prony analysis, and uh, diamond and DMD. And it's uh, clear that DMD and packaging software uh, obtain the estimation very close né? or matched with the packaging. In this table, we can see this comparison. And uh, the rectangle uh, red, we can view the, uh, all the eigenvalues of electromechanical modes is matched with the packaging. And the square in blue oh, from the prony is the only four eigenvalues is so close. The others is more far from the eigenvalues calculated. At the conclusion, we can see that the prony has the only one sign can be, signal can be used to uh, realize the estimation. When uh, rated than DMD, we can use the multiple signs. This, these tests are very preliminary, but uh, we also, uh, in the next steps, use the noise and signals to calculate and estimate the Egging, egging system and then uh, use it, new improvements of the prony methods to be uh, another test to be realized. And thank you for your attention and uh, thank you, you Zuma. We have five minutes for questions. Uh, thank you for your presentation, Zuma. Thank you. And thank you for attending the conference. So, uh, just a, a curiosity. In your opinion, what's the reason uh, you, you have got quite different numbers of engine values using Prony method and another one method? Uh, the Prony method used here is traditional. Yeah. It's know it, that the, in the lit literature has another, imp another improvements in the methods of prony. However, uh, the DMD is based on the, the decomposition of model dynamics and uh, using the single value, decompos single value decomposition to take an estimation of the eigenvalues from the eigen system. So the, the accuracy of the DMD consists in, in the quite easy to implementation of the methods and the robustness of these methods. But uh, I think that the prony methods with the other improvements can be more accuracy too in, the, in those results. Okay, uh, and I suppose that um, by analyzing the results of the Prony method, you can improve maybe identifying the most relevant Asian value for yeah. to uh, to your dynamic. So, yeah, no, in it's... our research, the electromechanic modes is more important, but uh, uh, we are going to using the synchro phasers to. Uh, take a look of the dumping of the system without know the dynamic characters or state speed of the system. Uh, this is not this is our research. What about the computational burden between these methods? Well, well, uh, I don't know a answer about this question because the results is also preliminary and. Uh, I think that uh, we will be searching on it. Okay, thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Zilmar, for coming here Thanks. and present excellent research. And, and in real science, we have a noise. Yeah. It's a problem to identify some modes in the system. And uh, how you uh, simulate your signals in this research? Uh, let's see the slide. You, you have the, a, a... The packaging calculates the state space yes. modeling. Yes, uh, you have and a state... And the input is an uh, input response. Yes, you have a, a state space mod. Yes. Then you applied uh, an impulse. Impulse. Yes. And yes, yes, you, you use the transient response to And uh, about the noise, uh, we already have the results about it. And the traditional prony uh, don't have the same accuracy of when compared the DMD. Uh, we can input the s noise in this analysis and see the accuracy of the DMD decomposition. Yes. And the in future works, you intend to, to use PMU signals? Yes. Yes, correct. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other question? Also, I would like to thank you, Zumar, thank for your you. presentation. Please, I, I would like to ask all of you to wait a little bit for the closing ceremony. Dr. Rafael is waiting right there, so please come here to to finish the excellent event. Thank you. I promise it, it will be very fast. I would like to share this uh, closing session with um, uh, Professor Hugo Silva Dias and Professor uh, João Paulo Carvalho Lustosa. I, I would like to ask you to come here and I, I, I explain why. Uh, we are the, um, the coordinators of the professional program the academic uh, program on, uh, in electrical engineering and the uh, Lustos in mechatronic systems. That is to say that uh, these are the programs that invited you in this conference. So I, I think that it's important that to remember that it's, uh, it's uh, the conference of our programs. Um, I would like also to say that uh, Professor Damascendo and uh, Professor Hedner that cannot, uh, could not be present. Uh, I, I, I will talk about uh, next year. The Edna and Damascendo accepted to be the chairs of the next year. So, so you are invited to, to come here, and uh, they will be responsible for that. Uh, uh, please come here, Damasen. 
indeed, you have to thank uh, Claire de Hoos because Claire de Hoos the coordinator of the academic program during the, the preparation of this conference. And, and you both? You are co chairs. <laughs> <laughs> So, so why you ask Hugo to, to say some words before closing the session? Okay, thank you everybody. It's a pleasure for us uh, to stay here and to receive uh, your good talks. So I'd like to thank Professor Rafael, Professor Lustosa, Professor Damasceno, Kleber, uh, Bruno. Uh, uh, so everybody that works hard uh, the, and the international speakers, I'd like to thank you, everybody. Uh, you have a very good speaker here, and uh, our event is is a, it's a pleasure for us to receive your talks here. So I'd like to thank uh, Finatec, University of Brasilia, uh, and FAPDF, and that. And these uh, people and these institutions is very important for us. I, I would like to say also that uh, you are invited to explore the papers in IEEE Explorer. Uh, they will be published uh, because uh, the program that uh, Hugo and Klebe uh, uh, coordinate uh, paid uh, for, for that, so the, all the papers will be available all to art. So it's very important for us uh, that uh, this happens. Of course, we, it, it was, uh, yeah, it, it is very interesting uh, what we were saying that uh, IEEE uh, has many chapters here and uh, all those chapters helped to the event to, to be realized here. I don't know if Lustos and Damasen would like to say some words. Again, I'd like to thank you all for presence. I mean, I think the event was very successful, but of course, only because of your efforts. You that came from other countries, you that came from other states and cities from Brazil also. Also, the people from the University of Brazil and for all the local universities that came here for providing the talks, for also for, for the audience also that came here to attend. The, also, the people on YouTube, you there, YouTube, that they see us right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I hope that you next year you all also can help us to make such a successful event. Also, more people that is interested in attending this event. And I'm going now to, to give back the word. I'd like, again, to, uh, to, congrat to thank all the societies of the IEEE that supported this event, right? The Vehicular Technology Society, the Power and Energy, also the CONSOC Communication Society, right, which were the three societies that supported us. So, young, young professionals and? and oh, yeah, I, I said also, vehicular, yes. Okay, so thank you again, and I'm going to pass the word to Professor Damasceno, right, and then Rafael can finish the, the event. You maybe just, if you want to say some words, thank you. I switch to Professor Rafael to close this okay. session. <laughs> So, I must say that I'm very happy to, to close this event. Thank you very much.